Welcome everyone. We um, have a short introduction to today's video and antique cut glass show by Hopstar.com. I'm Franz Helwig. Most of you know me rather well. The uh, show today is going to feature the cut and engraved glass of Corning, New York. Here we see the Hawks building, which is still in existence on Market Street in Corning. The signage was redone through a donation by the American Cut Glass Association. And I've got a few pieces out that will show some of the highlights of Corning's glass. So these are some rather special things that you may never see again, um, most of which are not for sale, but some of them are. This is a great uh, whiskey jug. It's the round ball shape. It's cut by Jehor in their Nassau pattern. Great example, lovely stone and copper wheel engraving. Great geometrics using cane, which adds a lot of brilliance. Four matching whiskey tumblers. Has a nice pattern cut neck. The characteristic ball shape faceted stopper. That's a nice J. Hoare example. Next is probably the most desirable pattern in cut glass. It's an 11 inch tray cut in Pueblo by Hawks. There are very few examples of this uh, in collections. It took me years to acquire one for myself. The cutting is just phenomenal. Quality of the blank is excellent. Probably Hawks most famous design. Here's a nice little gem. It's also by Hawks. It's copper wheel engraved as a sterling stopper and it's got a great engraved owl perched on a branch. Um, it's on a oak tree. Got some nice acorns engraved. Beautiful leaves that are polished after they were engraved. I love that little piece. It's the only one I've ever seen. Here's another phenomenal Hawks pattern. It's also one of the really rare gems. It is willow. In the old days it was known as lattice and rosettes. Highly sought after. Phenomenal blank. The basket weave effect in the clear channel cutting is amazing. You can see the depth of the channels. You can put your, actually put your finger in there, it's so deep. Great, great piece. Here's a neat stem. Um, I've gotten four or five of these, and these are the only ones I've ever seen. They're tall wines with a knob, faceted knob in the center, cut in Hawks Queen's pattern. That's one of Hawks' best recognized and most collected patterns. This is a great piece. Um, probably comparable to Pueblo in desirability. It's called Crystal City. For years it was known as Wedding Ring because of the interesting interlocking rings formed by the cane and the clear round tusks. It's always been one of my favorite patterns and this oblong bowl with the sterling rim is just over the top. It's really Phenomenal piece. Has a wafer base, heavy blank, incredible cutting. Early pattern, too. It was probably around 1890, 1888, somewhere in that neighborhood. Another J. Hoare piece is this um, Monarch Cranberry Cut to Clear Wine Stem. I've got a bunch of these. Hopefully, one of these days I'll find the cranberry decanter. Poor did a lot of great colored pieces. Um, they're very difficult to find. They're usually locked up in collections. But when you do find it, it's pretty exceptional. Another great cutting house was Sinclair. Sinclair emanated from his predecessors. All of these companies were tied to J. Hoare. They did phenomenal work. They trained under the... Um, expertise of Hoare, who was ahead of his time. Um, 
Assyrian uh, is similar to willow with the channel cutting and great three-dimensional hop stars. You can see the depth of cutting again in this piece. Assyrian is another really hard to find pattern. Another one of Hawk's great patterns is panel. This is an exceptional pitcher, heavy blank, clear, great cutting, again deep channel cuts that characterize the pattern. Highly sought after, very difficult to find. Another great Sinclair piece is this stars and pillars and engraving 12 inch plate. Clear, brilliant blank. The center clear area is actually tusk cutting and then the second middle section is hob stars that are very uh, ornately done and then lovely copper wheel engraved border. That's a rare pattern. Another example of a Syrian is this whiskey bottle by Sinclair. Deep, deep channel cutting, studded hob stars, they come out a half inch in depth. Step cutting on the neck, step cutting on the plug type stopper. Really neat piece. I was tickled pink to find that in a very old collection. Another nice Sinclair piece is this cut and engrave number four. Pitcher with flared tumblers. Rare to find a set like this. The pitcher alone is very unique because of the shape, plus it's a scarce pattern. I like the combination pieces that are engraved and have geometric cuts. The tumblers are really beautiful by themselves. And then here's an example of, uh, even though it wasn't corning, but how the glass was actually cut. Stone wheels done by hand. This is a, a photo of the Libby 1904 World's Fair punch bowl being cut, which is uh, on exhibit in the Toledo Museum. If you're ever in the area, it's definitely worth going to see. They have some other great examples of Libby glass. But the um, next videos will show um, the glass by Hawks, Hoare, Sinclair, Hunt, all companies that were cut in Corning. Corning was referred to as the Crystal City. It was the top area for cut glass production. Most of the companies began in that area and then spread out, but Corning, again, is Crystal City and where the bulk of the glass is. A month ago, I would have been exhibiting in the Corning Museum of Glass, so I thought I would do this um, particular show as a tipping my hat to the Corning Museum and Corning um, Cut Glass anyway. Thank you and enjoy the show.